In this lesson, we'll look at some of the history of experiments in physiology. And we'll start by asking a question that ancient philosophers asked, why do we breathe? And the answer to that question will introduce us to some major organ systems, the circulatory and respiratory systems. Because breathing was an obvious sign of life, early thinkers believed that understanding this process might shed light on the phenomenon of life. An ancient philosopher by the name of Anaximenes speculated that air was the most important element in the cosmos. Air was the principal substance from which all other elements were made. He noted that life could be extinguished if this invisible stuff was deprived from the human body. Anaximenes hypothesized that the function of breathing was to take in this vital material and by doing so maintain life. In science, hypotheses are tested by experiments, and the results can either support or weaken the hypothesis. Any hypothesis that can be weakened by evidence is said to be falsifiable. Today's scholars criticize Anaximedes for producing a hypothesis that is not falsifiable. For Anaximenes' hypothesis to be falsifiable, there must be some possible observation that could weaken it. Unfortunately, there is nothing that we could discover that would weaken his hypothesis that breathing maintains life because it takes in a life-giving substance. Good hypotheses are falsifiable and specific so that when experiments are performed, the results can either support or weaken the hypothesis. Unfortunately, Anaximenes' hypothesis is very general and doesn't suggest any further strategies to investigate the function of breathing. The hypothesis does not make any specific predictions. For instance, if we open the chest to look at the lungs, the hypothesis does not tell us anything specific about what we should find. Anaximenes' hypothesis, in short, is not very helpful. By the 4th century BC, Plato and Aristotle hypothesized a more specific function or role for air. In their view, life required the production of a biological heat that made digestion, movement, and reproduction possible. Aristotle proposed that this heat was generated within the heart. Unless the heart was cooled by air from the lungs, the biological flame would consume itself and go out. Breathing was necessary to cool the heart. Now let's apply, apply our thinking system to Aristotle's hypothesis. If air drawn in during breathing cools the heart and we stop an animal's breath, now consider the prediction that a student suggests, then the animal will die. Now this may be reasonable to you, but this prediction does not follow directly from the hypothesis. The hypothesis is not about the effects of breathing on death, but about the effects of breathing on the temperature of the heart. To clarify this, we should add more detail to our experiment as a reminder of what we are measuring. If air drawn in during breathing cools the heart, and we stop an animal's breath while measuring the temperature of the heart, then the temperature of the heart should increase. Notice that in designing an experiment, you have to think about what to observe or measure. In this regard, it is useful to let the stated hypothesis be your guide. In the above case, the claim was that breath cooled the heart. The keyword cooled is a clue that we want to measure the temperature in our test of the hypothesis. The experiment and prediction should mention what we are measuring. The resultant interpretation were clear. The heart does not heat up. And so our interpretation then is that the hypothesis is weakened. Because the result does not match the prediction, we say the hypothesis is weakened. Later thinkers, like the Roman physician Galen, added to Aristotle's theory. Galen's ideas provided the framework for most biological thought until the birth of the modern scientific era in the 16th century. For Galen, the fire in the heart was producing important changes in the blood. Air from the lungs mixed with blood in the heart and the biological heat transformed the mixture into a substance necessary for life. Notice that Galen's hypothesis does make specific predictions. For example, if the air mixes with blood in the heart and we examine the anatomical relation between the lungs and the heart, then we should find physical connections between the lungs and the heart. 
As it turns out, there are vessels that connect the heart and the lungs. But as we will see, Galen was wrong about what was in the vessels or what wasn't. Galen's understanding of the body began with nutrition. Nutrition involved the transformation of the lifeless components of food into the ingredients of the living body. In the first stage, food was absorbed from the gut and delivered to the liver through the portal vein where the food was brewed into blood. Perhaps Galen thought blood was produced in the liver because the liver looked like congealed or clotted blood. The blood produced in the liver was also given a weak form of an unobservable energy or force that Galen called natural spirits. As blood left the liver, it sloshed back and forth in the veins, distributing the natural spirits to the needy tissues. Blood that lost its natural spirits would have to be replaced with fresh supplies from the liver. Galen's ideas of natural spirits explained, to his satisfaction, how the body stayed alive and maintained its bulk. However, it did not explain the body's warmth, its movement, or its capacity to sense the environment. Therefore, therefore, Galen further hypothesized that the blood sent to the muscles and brain had to be supercharged with extra force or energy. This energy came from a reaction that required air. Like Anaximenes before him, Galen regarded the invisible substance that filled the atmosphere as a vital force. It was in the heart where blood and breath merged. Some of the blood leaving the liver made its way to the right side of the heart. Air was delivered from the lungs to the right side of the heart through the pulmonary vessels connecting the heart and lungs. Pulmonary means having to do with the lungs. Galen compared the heart to a furnace that burned oily fuel, the blood, supplied from the liver. The waste fumes generated by this biological combustion, or burning, exited through the vessels connecting the heart and lungs, and ultimately out through the windpipe. In support of this, Galen ob observed that on a cold day we can see our exhaled breath. However, this reaction in the heart was more than a heating system. The blood in the heart was transformed and refined. As impurities in the blood were burned off, the blood gained another weightless substance that Galen called vital spirits. Again, the vital spirits were distributed around the body, this time by the arteries. The vital spirits would have enhanced the effects of natural spirits, giving the body the capacity to move. Blood reaching the brain was further refined and given what Galen called animal spirits. It was this energy or force that was responsible for converting thought into action. In summary, the heart was the site of a very important reaction. Dark, purple or blue, blood from the veins entered the heart where it was heated and mixed with air. The resulting reaction purified the blood, giving it vital spirits and also changing its color to a lighter red. Blood exited the heart on the left side. Arteries carried blood with vital spirits to tissues around the body. Now it's important to note, in a diagram like this, often in medical textbooks, you'll find a heart portrayed here where, with the right side of the heart on the left side and the left side of the heart on the right side. So it's as if we're labeling the heart from the point of view of the person whose heart it is. So it's just going to be backwards in a lot of these diagrams. The part on the left is the right ventricle. The part on the right is the left ventricle. Galen makes use of metaphor when he describes the heart as a furnace. A metaphor is a literary device that involves comparing two things. For example, we might say that the human body is a machine. The metaphor maps our knowledge in one area, machines, and applies it to a new area, the human body. Notice that Galen did not think the heart was a pump. He thought it was a furnace. This shift in metaphor would come much later, when pumps were widely used technologies. Galen understood that blood from the body was carried to the heart by veins and entered the heart on the right side. He also understood that blood left the heart in arteries on the left side. But how did blood get from the right side of the heart to the left side? 
It didn't occur to him that blood would exit the heart on the right side, travel through the lungs, and return to the heart on the left side. Galen didn't understand the proper relationship between the heart and the lungs. Consequently, he hypothesized that blood could pass from the right ventricle of the heart through the muscular wall called the septum and into the left ventricle of the heart. One reason for believing that blood passed through the septum was his observation that infants do have a visible hole in the septum that allows blood to move from the right ventricle to the left ventricle. However, in the adult, the septum appears to be a solid barrier to blood flow. Galen hypothesized that the septum had tiny invisible holes that allowed blood passage from right to the left ventricle. So to summarize Galen's physiology, it all begins with food. Food is absorbed by the intestines and delivered to the liver where it is transformed into blood. The blood carries the natural spirits that slosh around in the veins, so uh, delivering this important natural spirit to all of the tissues of the body. Now, some of that blood eventually uh, washes into the heart, to the right side of the heart, where it is mixed with air from the lungs. And the heat in the heart and the mixture of blood and air refines the blood. It burns off impurities and it kind of supercharges the blood, giving it the vital spirits. The blood is also a little bit lighter in color. And the left side of the heart is what then delivers through arteries, delivers the blood with the vital spirits to other organs of the body, the muscles and the brain. And up in the brain, the blood is given the animal spirits. Now notice then, this system here uh, makes certain commitments that air is going to be uh, delivered from the lungs to the heart, that the heart is a furnace, it is not pumping anything, it's a furnace, it's refining the blood, and Galen is, is uh, trying to understand how uh, blood vessels like veins and arteries are working together. So he's going to think of two kinds of blood in this system. There's the blood in the veins, the, that's the blood that carries the, the natural spirits, and then there's the blood in the arteries, that blood carries the vital spirits. We will see that uh, later uh, experimenters will put this system to the test and find many errors in Galen's physiology.